So, today I'm going to give you an introduction to Quill Video Studio 12. We open up our program here. The Video Studio Editor, Pro X2. Very good program. Very simple, easy to use. Go up to the file, open project. In my case, everything is stored on a separate partition on this hard drive. Loading the file data. Now this is the project I had just previously rendered. And you can see how I chopped it up into many sections so that it would act match the audio and you can also see how I had to alter the playback of each one of these clips so that it would match the tempo of the music. But you can also see that because I've altered the playback speed, the actual real-time playback speed in the editor suffers so I'm going to open a new project or start a new project and open up the last video I rendered which is on D under videos my better scan eclipse Vibrato scanner. Here, here's the video. We drag it down here to the video timeline. And we can play the project. You'll notice that there is nothing cut away from this file at all. And we can play the project up here in the preview window. Notice there's no audio. We have to add that in ourselves. Simply go up to audio go down and find the song that we've already loaded you can load your songs here with that little folder button and I have rendered a WAV file for this project that's actually three songs that I've dragged down one by one and at any time in a project you can go to the share button here and create a sound file it can be a Microsoft Wave, an MP4, WMA, whatever you want. I choose Wave because it's uncompressed and higher quality. So, let's say we want to add an additional picture to our production. Go here to image. I have lots of images in here. And let's say I want to add a different image from what I have. Go into my quick cam folder. There's several pictures here that are applicable to the actual scene I'm using. Um, take this picture for instance. And drop it into our video. Zoom in on it. And if we stretch it out to fit the size of the screen and then apply a chroma mask 
to make it transparent. Let's change the chroma mask a little bit, alter it. That doesn't look too good. We can try a black mask. That's a little better. But that's not exactly where I want to put it in the video. I need to make it smaller too. Almost there. You can use these little arrows to move forward in the timeline also. That's where I want to be, is right here. That's exactly where I want to be. So I want to fade it in. And then I want to apply some type of flash to it. So I'll cut it right about here. Go to my effects, flashback. I use these pretty randomly. And it will tell us that the uh, effect is too big to fit the duration of the clip. And then we'll stretch it to fill most of the clip up and of course we probably won't be able to see what this looks like fully rendered until we actually render the video it didn't look too good there I didn't like it so what I can do is select the clip, make it a little bit longer, and apply a filter to it, video pan and zoom in our video filter group, drag it down to the clip, go to customize filter, and I want to set a real simple two point keyframe here. Our first keyframe here, our pan will be full. Now, it needs to be zoomed in a little bit, about that much. And then our second keyframe will be fully zoomed out. Uh, make sure it's centered over in the preview window. Click OK, zoom out and see what we have. Couldn't even see it. But you know what, I'm going to render it anyway. Because I'm sharing this moment with my viewers. And this will be a good way to show that sometimes Even a mistake can look good in a video. So, we'll render the file. And see what it looks like. Thank you for spending the time with me today. I hope you all have a blessed day. And continue to watch my videos.